Um, well, I'm here today because it's a cause I'm very passionate about, um, something that I've been interested in since I was young. Um, I believe that the unborn don't have a voice and the only way that we can protect their rights is if we speak up for them and I think that abortion is something that people don't really understand fully um, how it affects other people. They just think of it as a, well, they listen to the catchphrases of pro-choice. So I just want them to know that it, other people see that it's something young people are passionate about and interested in. It's not a dying cause. And um, yeah, I hope that message gets out there today. I'm here at the uh, March for Life in Queen's Park, Brisbane with uh, Member of Parliament George Christensen. George, uh, why are you here today? Well, look, uh, this is the penultimate issue as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I'm a conservative. I uh, defend traditions, traditions that are whole communities. I've got a, a bit of a libertarian streak, not too far, but I mean, I believe in individual rights. And the most paramount right that any human being can have is the right to life. So that's why this is important right now in Queensland. Um, this issue is under assault. I mean, we could have laws as draconian as those that exist in Victoria and uh, that would stifle um, not just the rights of the individual with the right to life, but the right for doctors and other health professionals to actually remove themselves from abortion procedures. Uh, that would be um, uh, disgraceful. What's your concern for young women your age, how abortion might affect them? I feel like they're selling themselves short. They think that they're fighting for their rights, but they're actually not. They, they deserve better than abortion. They deserve people who will be ca taking care of them and their baby, and we should be focusing on providing that. I just feel like women don't realise, and a lot of them are, are hurting, and I can understand that, that peak women are in terrible situations, and I think that women need to stand together instead of feeling like we're all fighting against each other. So I think we need to make a stand for the most vulnerable in our society, uh, the unborn, and the issue of human rights for the unborn I think is uh, probably the biggest social justice issue that uh, our nation faces. I'm here with a whole stack of really wonderful people who uh, want us to hold the line as members of parliament on uh, uh, radical law reform uh, in terms of abortion. So the Queensland Ra Law Reform Commission is wanting to make dramatic and radical changes uh, to our legislation that's actually not needed. And we have a system that works. Well, it means um, that we need to consider that in this issue there are women who have um, very high needs and that many women who choose to have abortion don't actually want to have abortions. They have abortions because they simply feel they have no other choice. And so we are today about raising awareness that yes, our unborn children are of value and they're worthwhile, but also we have women in very difficult circumstances who also require support. So we need to do both. We need to um, acknowledge the value of our children while at the same time understanding the very real needs of our women. And that's why I'm holding this sign. Hello ma'am, why are you marching today? Oh, I just want to help protect um, the unborn children and particularly their mothers. As a conservative with a libertarian lean, how do you respond to concerns that the government is removing a woman's autonomy over her own body? Well, uh, look, you know, I suppose that is uh, the crux of the issue. Is uh, a gestating baby uh, actually part of the woman's body? We know, science tells us, that at a certain point in time that child can exist and can be brought to uh, full development outside of the womb. So, you know, there is a very big scientific question about that. Uh, science tells us that actually pretty much it's not part of the woman's body. It's a life gestating inside a woman's body, not part of it. But let me just say that women mentally and emotionally are the biggest victims of abortion. Uh, we know that from psychological research that's done. So this doesn't just harm, uh, obviously, the babies inside the womb. It harms women emotionally and mentally, scars them for life in some respects. We just need to put more resources into caring for women at their point of need and uh, to support them uh, through 
uh, when they have an unplanned uh, pregnancy and unfortunately there's not enough resources invested in that area which would really help a lot and I think that's a really important thing. So today is about standing up with women uh, as a man, standing up with women and saying men we need to do more uh, but it's also standing up for pre-born uh, babies uh, that uh, really, uh, you know, they are human, they are people uh, and they should have, uh, uh, you know, every right afforded to them as well under our law. great agency, this humanitarian agency that trades in fetal body parts post-abortion and profits off that. And they, as I say... So are you worried there's going to be a presence from counter-protesters today? Well, I don't see any here today, but I've got to tell you, in marches past that I've been at, I saw a guy with a sign, uh, you know, a feral looking guy with a sign that said something pretty feral in itself, and that is, Mary should have aborted. And I looked at that guy, I mean, I got incensed because that is provocation. And I said to the guy, you must be feeling really brave putting up a sign like that. I wonder if you'd stand outside a mosque saying Muhammad's mother should have aborted. These really brave people that come along with these signs that vilify us religiously uh, because we dare to show our faith in the public square like this. It's disgraceful, so I'm glad there seems to be an absence of them today. I'm marching because it's a decision that we need to come to as a com as in our society. We need to understand that abortion is not good un for anybody at any time, long term or short. Look, I think this will be a peaceful uh, demonstration of the truth about human life and we, we need to do that. We need to keep advocating for the truth and I believe in time the more we persist with this pro-life cause, uh, the more that our society will see the truth of the humanity of the unborn. So um, I just think we've got to keep, keep at it and uh, in time uh, this edifice, this false edifice of abortion will fall over. So how would you like to see the laws changed, if at all? Okay, I think the laws as they stand are good. Uh, there is plenty of access of abortion uh, for women in circumstances where it's really needed and doctors understand that. However, um, so access to abortion is not the issue and liberalising abortion laws will not help women. Um, what it will do is it will mean that abortions will be able to be performed later and later and that's what we've seen down in uh, Victoria where we have seen um, many more late term abortions. Um, so that's something we need to really consider. Um, what I would like to see is the law remain as it is, but um, what we need to do is develop policy and resource um, um, policies that will provide real help and real support for women, Dave. So, you know, women need housing, they need financial help, they need counselling, they need support. There's a whole lot of different things that we can do in order to support women and I'd like to see some conversation around that.